yesterday, at least at the time of this recording, my Patreon supporters, Discord supporters, and others got together and discussed a very important issue, at least as far as space geeks out there are concerned, and that is, when is Starship actually going to take off? Are they going to let it take off from Boca? Is the FAA going to put the brakes on this? Is it even safe to do it? And also, Starlink, what is in its future? What did Elon mean when they were running in the red and needed tens of billions of dollars of support? What all of this means to the future of Starlink and can SpaceX really compete? Because the future of Starship and indeed Elon's dream to travel to Mars is very much dependent on what happens with Starlink. So here is a short example or a short smattering of some of the questions that were asked and my responses. If you'd like to be part of one of these future discussions, it's all in the description. Welcome to a special episode of The Angry Astronaut. Today I had an opportunity to speak with some of my Discord followers, folks who are Patreon supporters and generous supporters of this channel, not just in terms of financially supporting what I do, but also contributing a lot of knowledge and a lot of professionalism. And you're going to see some of the highlights from this conversation in case you want to participate in the future. So let's get started. A tentative announcement since we have gotten news that um, Sir Richard intends to beat Jeff into space um, it's my intention to see that happen in person um, I have changed my flight arrangements for tomorrow to fly to Denver I'll be staying with family there and then driving to New Mexico to Spaceport America to watch this in person. That, it's my current plan. And also Starlink. There was a recent interview conducted with Elon Musk about Starlink. He's, he's talking about the fact that he has uh, running around 70,000 customers at the moment, and it's not nearly enough. Um, he's running significantly in the red, and he's talking about you know, 10 to $20 billion worth of investment in order for Starlink to survive. I mean, he's actually used terms like this. Um, also saying things like, it'll be nice if we don't go bankrupt. Um, those sorts of things. You know, Elon has a tendency, tendency of doing these things. He will say things that are really optimistic, you know, really aggressive date wise and stuff and then he'll use words like bankruptcy later on um so you know october 1st which as i mentioned that can be extended um that would be insanely fast um that would be an accomplishment that nobody else could you know come anywhere close to um, you know, for them to go orbital before SLS um, does their first launch uh, to orbit the moon, um, that would be an astonishing accomplishment for, you know, a ship being launched from a place where there was just, you know, a beach and, and some, uh, some, <laughs> uh, some seagrass not that long ago. So this has demonstrated, you know, they... Yeah, you know, a lot of people aren't familiar with what they do, but their accomplishments in the field of military technology has been tremendous. Um, they've been, you know, a supplier of advanced military technology to the U.S. government for a very long time. Um, so, you know, they have accomplishments under their belt, and so support going their way, I could understand that, and I can see them accomplishing what they have in mind, and they they do have a vision, you know. 
I see that the vision is there. It's it's Artemis. You know, their vision is Artemis. A lot of their technology is in SLS, mostly in the second stage, but they have a lot of technology in SLS. And so therefore, you know, Alpaca is designed to work in conjunction with that. So their vision, I think, is pretty clear. They want to go hand in hand with NASA to go to the moon to stay and then moon to Mars. Well, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I hope that uh, Starlink and indeed companies like them, I mean, OneWeb, uh, you know, to talk about them, they recently announced that they have the coverage that they were looking for. Actually, they were they were focusing on Europe and with this last launch of Soyuz, they've achieved European coverage. Um, they were focusing just on one area and now they're gonna be expanding out from there. But nevertheless, um, I think that, and there's rural areas in Europe that could benefit from this, you know, in the Balkan states, for example, and Romania and other areas that don't necessarily have a huge built out infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, is he definitely, he's dedicated to a vision that isn't even really necessarily a financially profitable one. I mean, going to Mars, there isn't necessarily any money in that, um, at least not in his lifetime. I mean, that's certainly a long-term objective. That That's more of a dream than anything else. That's more of a dream for the human species, you know, to make us into a multi-planetary race. There, there ain't a lot of money in doing that. There are plenty of things that can be exploited in space that are a lot easier to reach than Mars. But, you know, that's not his vision. That's not his goal. It's one of the reasons why I have always respected the guy, you know, and his view. And yeah, he is, he's pushing for this. He's, he's pushing extremely hard for this. And, you know, certainly I wish him all the success. I thought that that was just a, a really nice, for once I had something nice to say about Blue Origin. I thought that that was a very good gesture on their part was to allow her that opportunity. Um, you know, the reason these folks are here and joining us is because they're supporters of the channel. You know, you too can be a supporter for as little as 75 cents a week. It's really not uh, expensive to be part of this family. Um, and of course, any support that I receive is what allows me to come and cover these sorts of events. And this one was a special one. Yeah, very much so. Them and Scaled Composites, Burt Rutan, all of that. Um, you know, they were the big names in the industry and the X Prize, you know, and everything associated with that. Having a ship that could fly, you know, make back to back flights to suborbital space, you know, all of those things were something that had never really been done before, at least not by a private company. And uh, guess what? they accomplished it and that was so long ago now and to see it finally come to fruition and yeah maybe it kind of seems like old news right now with people going to orbit and i certainly wouldn't pay 28 million dollars for an experience like that but at the same time that isn't what uh virgin galactic has in mind they're talking about you know a couple hundred grand they're not talking about the the tens of millions um, that's being paid by uh, whoever whoever this guy is that's uh, decided to go up with Jeff. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd be very interested to hear what what uh, what her experiences are going to be like. And, and frankly, I, I kind of hope that that she's the one who has the media spotlight on her um, after that mission. I, I hope that uh, that that's the that's the person that the news focuses on because you know that to me is is a valid thing that's that's somebody who spent decades and decades of her life um loving you know the whole idea of space travel not getting the opportunity to 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 do it and then finally at least getting a yeah it's uh it's it, you know you, you got these moments of what happens if you know and one of the big questions i've had right now is what happens if you have an rud on the pad with um with super heavy with a stack starship you know what happens if that pulls an n1 you know that's been the biggest what if question for me what does that do to the future of um of spacex First of all, will the F, you know, the FAA even permit that sort of risk to be taken? And if they do, 
what happens, you know, if, if something goes south. Um, you know, that's, that's something that has been worrying me beyond a personal level since I intend to be there. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a big question mark. Why I wanted to have this conversation is to just kind of get everybody's opinions about where, you know, where's the truth? You know, where is SpaceX actually right now? How are they doing in terms of funding, you know, for Starship? Now that this money is that they've gotten from the government for Lunar Starship is still a little bit in limbo and that sort of thing, you know, where is the reality?